Okay, uh, today we are going to discuss how to apply transfer pricing techniques in real, real world scenarios, the practical questions. First, I select a question from your study text, right? It will be available on the screen few minutes later, right? We will discuss uh, some questions from the study text as well as the past papers. The, the problem is we do not have past papers from the AAA, so the AMA advanced management accounting, but we have a similar paper in the previous syllabus 1519 syllabus that is BMA paper. Therefore, we can discuss question from the BMA papers. You also can download all the questions and answers from the website C S Sri Lanka website. Okay, let us start a question from your study text moving into your computer screen. Here you can appear the question. See what are the steps you have to follow when you are solving this type of questions, right? A company operate two divisions, Abel and Baker, let us say A and B. Abel, that is A manufactures two product X and Y. The product X is sold to external customers for 42,000 per unit. The only outlet for the product Y is product Y is the B, that means A producing two products, X selling outside, Y selling only inside because they do not have external market. Now, this is the structures info, info, the is about the structure. Therefore, in transfer pricing question, first of all, you need to draw down the structure, right. This is division A, this is division B, right. Division A produced two products X and Y, right. Out of this now, out of these two product, A sell, sells X product outside for 42,000 rupees, but Y do not have external market. Therefore, their only market is transferring it to the division B. This is the Y, right. They are producing two product X and Y, X selling outside for 42,000 rupees, Y have only market that is B, therefore they are transferring internally the product Y. B supplies an external market and can obtain its semi finished supplies that product Y from either able or an external source. Now, B can buy this item Y, this is internal item Y produced by A or they can buy this from outside, this is outside supplier. They can purchase either from their own division or they can buy it from outside. When you analyze in this question, it is better to have a boundary line for the entity. Now, this is the entire entity. Why this is important, then you can easily understand the transfer pricing questions as well as other part of the question. Moving into the question again, Baker currently has opportunity to produce y product Y from uh, Baker currently has the opportunity to purchase product Y from external supplier for 38,000 rupees per unit. Again, we can mention here they can buy the product at 38,000 rupees per unit from outside supplier. Moving into the question again, the capacity of division A is measured in units of output irrespective of whether product X and Y or a combination of both are being manufactured. The associated product cost are as follows in rupees 1000. That sentence is very important. A is measured that able is measured in units of output irrespective whether product X, Y, O or combination both are being manufactured, right. Now, you have been given information about the production cost of both X and Y. I will put them into the diagram we have taken from into the whiteboard. Moving into the whiteboard, they have mentioned the variable cost per X 32,000, 32, 
the variable cost for y 35,000, fixed cost per unit of x per unit 5,000 and 5,000. That is how they have given you the information. Now, our question is we have to advise about the transfer pricing. Stand, study the case again, x produce two product x and y, sorry a produce two product x and y, x they are directly selling to outside for 42,000 rupees, they are incurring 32,000 variable cost and allocated fixed cost of 5,000 per unit of x. They are producing another product called y, y do not have external market, they are only market transferring it to b. If b stop the purchase of y from a, they has to stop the production of y. That y takes 35,000 variable cost for the production and allocated fixed cost is 5,000 per unit. Meantime, b is the purchaser, only customer for the product y, right, of a. But b, that customer can buy the same product from outside supplier. Outside supplier agrees to transfer that or that sell that item to B at 38,000, clear. From this information, our question is transfer pricing, what would be the best transfer price to transfer this product to B, right, transfer price, sorry, what would be the best transfer price or what would be the best transfer prices. Now, when you refer in this diagram, you can easily understand this B can buy any item of Y from outside for 38,000 rupees. Therefore, A has a restriction. The restriction is A cannot increase the price of Y more than 38,000 because you know if A increase the price of Y more than 38,000 definitely B will buy the product from outside because he believe this is cheaper if A increase the product of Y more than 38,000. Therefore, A requires to maintain the transfer price always below 38,000, right. That is the information appearing. Let us see the question. Moving into the computer screen again, using the above information, advice on an appropriate transfer price for the sales of product Y from division A to division B under the following conditions. Roman number 1, when division A has spare capacity and limited external demand for product X. Roman number 2, when division A is operating at full capacity with unsatisfied external demand for product X. Now, they are asking two questions. I think you can have another detailed understanding reading the question again. Therefore, I will take question again. A company operates two divisions. Now, you have the pictorial diagram, I think, with you. Uh, compare the pictorial diagram with the question again. A company operates two divisions A and B. A manufactures two product X and Y. Product X is sold to external customer for 42,000 per unit. The only outlet for product Y is Baker. The B, the Baker is the B. B, B supplies an external market and can obtain its semi finished supplies from either A or external sources. Baker, that is B, currently has the opportunity to purchase product Y from external sup supplier for 38,000 per unit. The capacity of division A is measured in unit of output, irrespective of whether product X and Y or combination of both are being manufactured. The associate product costs are as follows. That is the information given. <coughs> Let us take the question now. You have to provide best transfer price if a transfer both X and Y to B, but you have to provide it separately. Let us take one by one. Roman number one. When division A has spare capacity and limited external demand for product X, clear? 
that is the first question. Let us take the answer. This answer why it is important, this is explaining the reason. Now, question A has spare capacity, but limited demand for product X, that is the situation. Let us see the answer on this screen. Division A has spare capacity and limited external demand for product X, right. In this situation, the incremental cost to the company to produce in product Y 35,000. It cost division B 38 to buy product Y from external market and so it is cheaper to buy 3000 per unit to buy from division A. That is the meaning of you know according to our diagram, B can buy product Y from outside 38000, but as a company see the time diagram you have drawn. As a company they uh, that A can produce product Y for 35,000 variable cost. Therefore, why be going to out purchase it is from outside paying additional 3000 rupees. The transfer price need to be fixed at a price above 35,000 both to provide some incentive to division A to supply division B and to provide some contribution toward fixed overhead. The transfer price must be below 38,000. I think you can remember I have explained. A cannot charge more than 38,000 because B can buy it from outside for 38,000 rupees. To encourage division B to buy from division A rather than from external supply. Therefore, answer the transfer price should be therefore be set in range of 35,000 and A 38,000. Moving to the whiteboard. Now, see if A has spare capacity to produce Y as well as if A has limited demand for X the both mention A can produce Y because A have spare capacity. When X has limited demand, A cannot use their full capacity to produce X. Therefore, A can produce Y, right? But A can supply Y only to the B. This fixed cost allocated to both products are absorbed fixed cost, not relevant. Why? This fixed cost has been calculated taking the total fixed cost divided by number of units. Even A produce 1 unit, 0 unit or 100 units or 1000 units, their fixed cost will be same. Clear? Therefore, eliminating the production process that is stopping the production or continuing the production they cannot change this fixed cost within the capacity. Therefore, this is irrelevant. If A produce Y, their actual relevant cost is 35,000 rupees. Therefore, A must at least charge 35,000 rupees, at least charge 35,000 rupees for product Y because they are incurring 35,000. But they cannot increase the price more than 38,000. The reason is B can buy it from outside 38,000. Therefore, they must set the price in between 35,000 and 38,000 rupees. The better price would be a middle price. The reason is because even A produce or not, they have a fixed cost. Therefore, to have a motivation for A, B must pay some margin to A. From that margin, A can recover their fixed cost. Therefore, price should be set in between 35,000 and 38,000. It should be below 38,000. Better to have more than 35,000 up to 38,000 reasons they have to cover their fixed cost. Right? That is the answer for Roman number A. Very basic questions, but you have to think lot of things because a has to produce incurring variable cost 35,000 for Y. We can buy it from outside 38,000. Their price should be ranging between these two prices. Let us move into the question number 2, that is Roman number 2. Moving into the computer screen. When the division A is operating at full capacity with unsatisfied external demand for product X. Now, let us see the answer for Roman number 
2. Moving into the whiteboard, I am trying to explain now second scenario. Therefore, I will ex remove the highlights of the first Roman number 1. The highlight I have made. Okay. Now, what is the situation? A operating in full capacity. Say this is the machinery of the A. Operating in full capacity means they are operating in fully. They cannot produce further items. They are operating in full capacity and they have external demand only for product X. Right. Therefore, definitely A will produce, A will produce and sell only X. They are not focusing on Y because they have external demand for X that is unsatisfied demand that is they have over demand sorry excess demand that excess demand is unsatisfied demand therefore they can produce as much as possible of x and supply outside and sell it 42000 they are currently working full capacity okay now assume b request one unit of y from a now what happened 1B request or order 1 unit of Y from A, A that A division requires to shift of the production of 1 unit of X. Clear? Here I think you can see I have erased some part of this box to say they have to stop the production of X. Right? Previously they have worked in full capacity they entirely produce x. Since we demanded one unit of y, they have stopped the production of one unit of x. Now, this part will be allocated to produce x, right? Sorry, y. Now, assume this part of the capacity, they will allocate to produce y. Now, uh, one unit of y, they will produce and translate to b. What happened? They can use, they can utilize this area to produce another y x product, another x product and they can sell it outside. If they produce one unit of x, they can sell it at 42,000, incurring only 32,000 variable cost. Therefore, they can have contribution per unit of x rupees 10,000. Since they have stopped the production of X here, since they are producing now Y, what happened? They will lose this contribution per unit. Is that clear? They will lose this 10,000 contribution per unit. That means, if they allocate this area to produce one unit of Y, they have this direct cost that is variable cost and they have this opportunity cost. Clear? Therefore, total cost will be variable cost and this opportunity cost. Clear? They have a variable cost of 35,000 to produce one unit of Y and they have opportunity cost of producing Y of 10,000. Why? If you allocate one part of your capacity to produce y, you will lose the production of x, therefore per unit of x, you will lose 10,000 contribution. Now, what happened? Now, A is starting to think, why we produce one unit of y? Because we can produce one unit of x and sell outside and earn 10,000. Therefore, if I producing one unit of y, B should pay my variable cost plus my opportunity cost also. That would be the thinking of A, because he has an opportunity cost. He has an opportunity cost, therefore he is trying to recover the variable cost plus opportunity cost. Let us move into the answer now, but keep your mind they cannot go beyond the 38,000. 
let us see the answer Roman number 2 moving into the computer screen. Division A is operating at full capacity with unsatisfied external demand for product X. If division A chooses to supply division B rather than external market, the opportunity cost of such addition must be incorporated into the transfer price. For every unit of product Y produced and sold to division B, division A will lose 10,000 in contribution due to not supplying the external market with product X as I explained to you that opportunity cost is 10,000. The relevant cost of supplying product Y in these circumstances is therefore 45,000 as I told you the production variable cost of Y 35,000 then the opportunity cost 10,000 as I highlighted in on the whiteboard total cost for product Y will be 45,000 variable cost 35,000 and opportunity cost 10,000. It is therefore in the interest of the company as a whole if division B sources product Y externally at a cheaper price of 38,000 per unit division A, A can therefore continue to supply external demand at 42,000. The company can ensure this happen if the transfer price of product Y is set above 42,000 thereby encouraging division B to buy external rather than the division A. I think you got the mean. Moving into the whiteboard, if A produce one unit of Y, they will sacrifice one unit of X, then variable cost plus the opportunity cost of not selling one unit of X, therefore this should be transferred at 45,000. But we can purchase it out from outside 38,000. Therefore, it is cheaper to buy product Y from outside at 38,000 rather than purchasing this product variable cost plus opportunity cost that is totally 45,000. If A transfer B at 45,000, B lose an opportunity to buy it at 38,000. As a group, additional 7,000 they are required to incur for A, right. Therefore, advice would be B must buy it from outside and A should not produce Y for internal market. They should use their full capacity to produce entire external demand of the product X. That is how you have to analyze. Therefore, what I have to tell you from this example, the transfer pricing questions, you can't say this is the clear answer, this is the exact answer for these questions. That is depend on how you analyze the case. Therefore, I will give you few steps to follow. Once you receive a transfer pricing question, number one, Read the question carefully, read it carefully. Then you need to draw the structure, draw the structure. What is the structure? This is the structure. You need to take that paragraphs into a rich picture. This is the rich picture. This picture will give you the clear understanding what is currently happening. Then, through the structure you drawn, understand the current situation. The current situation you need to understand. Once you understand the current situation, easily you can draw up a proposal. Therefore, step number 4, provide the proposal. You can see it is better to do like this, like we have explained here. That is how you need to do. Therefore, important point read the question and draw the rich picture. 
based on the rich picture you can easily understand what you need to do right in addition to that there is another question moving into the computer screen i will take question b now in the same question question b explain how your answer might be different if a system of dual pricing was in operation now you have to learn what is dual pricing pricing if dual pricing inactive what would be your answer how your answer would change right okay let's take the whiteboard again Well, let us try to understand what is dual pricing. Division A produce x and y, sell x outside and trying to transfer y only market to B, but they can purchase it out from outside 38,000. That was the story. Now, if you refer the first Roman number 1 scenario, right, for product Y, they have a variable cost of 35,000, right. Therefore, we have discussed A must transfer Y to B, a price in between 35,000 and 38,000, right. If B request it at 35,000, A will recover only their variable cost. They cannot recover part of their fixed cost. But if A can transfer it at 38,000, then A will recover their variable cost as well as the fixed cost. That is the story, right. Therefore, you know, if you are in this end as the transfer price, we will not be able to have at least margin or recover fixed cost. But if you are in this end as the transfer price, they will earn more profit, they will reduce their margin. Therefore, from the transfer price, when one party getting the benefit, other party will lose their benefit. Therefore, we have to have strategies to overcome this conflict. The one strategy is dual pricing. This pricing is only an internal strategy because externally they are ultimately they are telling selling it to the outside. Therefore, transfer price is an only internal pricing method. Therefore, that organization can propose okay, A wants to recover their variable cost plus their fixed cost or sometimes a margin because to show their performance, otherwise they will lose their performance. When for, for at the performance appraisal of divisions, A will lose their incentive bonuses and everything since they transfer it at 35,000. Therefore, company can advise CEO, say CEO or MD can advise, okay A, you can transfer variable cost plus, fixed cost plus a margin, that is one price. You can transfer and record at your price number 1. If B record that same price as the purchase price, they will lose their performance. Therefore, MD advice division B, okay, you will record in another price. Therefore, sometimes A will transfer it at 42,000, that variable cost plus, fixed cost plus, then it will be with uh, that uh, 40,000, then with the margin say it is 42,000, we will record it at 38,000. Now, if A transfer variable cost plus fixed cost, 
this will be they will transit at 40,000. But we are not we not going to record it at 40,000 because we can buy it from outside 38,000. Therefore, we will record his purchase at 38,000. A will record his sales at 40,000. Dual pricing, two prices used in transfer price. By recording 40,000 in the A's books, A will recover their cost. By recording at 38,000 in the B's books, B will maintain their margin. That strategy called dual pricing. Let us move into the answer how this company can operate the dual pricing technique. Moving into the computer screen, question B. In the situation in Roman number 1, a will be shown as selling price at the market price of 38,000 and B will be shown as buying at the variable cost of 35,000. In row number 2, because the transfer price is being set off to encourage B to buy externally, B should be charged with the full selling price about 42,000 that able that is A charge it. That is the two prices they suggested because we have two cases. Two, two scenarios given in question A, Roman number 1 and 2, right. In the Roman number 1, as we discussed, the variable cost 35,000, the lowest price that Y can be transferred to B. Maximum price will be the 38,000, that is external market price available. We have given that range 35,000 and 38,000. Therefore, in the Roman number 1, you can advise them, okay, A can transfer it at 38,000, B can record it at 35,000. When it comes to the Roman number 2, again you can advise them, okay, A, you can transfer including your opportunity cost, but other party can record it at 38,000, that is the market price. Likewise, you can give them a two prices to record to overcome the dilution of performance of each divisions, right. That is how you have to apply dual pricing. Sometimes they will ask a theoretical question, what is dual pricing? You have to say, dual pricing is a transfer pricing technique, which allows to record sales and purchase of two division within a single entity at two prices. When one division transferring a product to the another division, tra transfer allowed to record it at their own price and transferee allowed to record that purchase it at their own price, right. That is the dual pricing technique. Moving into the computer screen, again I will take a question from the study text. Right, you can appear in the question on the screen. Read the question. It's a basically asking about the theories, but this is very important to apply transfer pricing techniques in real world scenario. You should try to learn the above rules and refer back to the appropriate part of the chapter if you are not sure about any point. Read through the rules again and the answer. Then answer these questions. This means you have many techniques in transfer pricing in your study text. Read it and answer this question. Question A. Identify in which situation transfer price should be the external market price. Let us move into the whiteboard. Let us take the same scenario. They sell product X to outside customer for 40, yeah, 42,000. They supply B, Y to B, but B can pre say produce, purchase that same product Y from outside for 38,000. Now they are asking, what is the scenario where transfer price can be the market price? Clear? Here, Y 
when y producing sorry when a producing y only for b they do not have a market price for y right. If a produce y for the external market also they have a market price for y clear. In such a situation a can find the lowest market price in the market and they can supply product y to b based on the market price. Let us move into the answer where you can use market price as the transfer price. If an external market exit for the product being transferred, the ideal transfer price will be the market price. I think you can understand. Now, in this scenario again in on the whiteboard, Y produce only for B. Assume product Y also selling outside. That means, for product Y, they have external demand. Say it is selling at 37,500 rupees in the external market. For product Y, variable cost 35,000. Therefore, no need to transfer Y to B at 35,000. Why? No need to transfer because they can sell disease outside for 37,500. In such an opportunity, why you transfer 35,000 at 35,000 to B? Therefore, you can charge 37,500 also from B because it is 38,000 with another supplier. Clear? Therefore, A has a chance to charge market price of the transferred product when it has an external market. Therefore, you can say when transferred product has external market, in this case product Y, market price is the transfer price, got it? As the transfer price, you can use market price that is 37,500 as I explain here. Why? The reason A can sell the product Y outside for 37,500, therefore no need to transfer it at 35,000 variable cost to B, because if A not transfer Y to B, B definitely buy it outside from 38,000. Therefore, you can charge your external market price from the B's as well, right? That is why I mentioned when transferred product has, ex, has, has external market, has an external market, take market price as the transfer price. Market price 37,500 variable cost, 35,000, no need to transfer it at variable cost, transfer it at market price. That is the first scenario. Moving to the computer screen again. The second scenario, define the ideal transfer price. What is the best transfer price? Right? That is question B. When you moving into the answer of B, the ideal transfer price should be reflect the opportunity cost of sale to the supply division and opportunity cost to the buying division. Ideal transfer price means the best transfer price to maximize the gain for transfer, transferee as well as the transfer, that is sending division as well as receiving division. In this case, A and B, A is the sending division, B is the receiving division. If you can recover the opportunity cost of both companies, sorry, not the both companies, both the divisions, that is the ideal transfer price. That is why they have mentioned the ideal transfer price should be the, should reflect the opportunity cost of sales to supply division and opportunity cost of cost to the buying division. If you can recover the opportunity cost of both sender and receiver, that would be the best ideal transfer price. The third scenario, 
C. Identify in which circumstance the transfer price should be standard variable cost plus opportunity cost of making the transfer. See the point. I will move into the computer sorry whiteboard. The second scenario when variable cost plus opportunity cost is applicable as the transfer price. Right? When variable cost and opportunity cost applicable. Look here. They are not supplying Y to external market. Right? Ignore this part. Right? But they are supplying, they are producing X also in addition to Y. They are working at full capacity. Within the full capacity, they are producing only X and supplying into external market. X also has excess demand. Extra, excess demand means unsatisfied demand. That means, you can produce further further and supply external market that product X. That means, you cannot produce Y within the organization, you cannot produce Y within the organization. If you produce Y, you have to stop the production of X. If you stop the production of X, you will lose the market margin. In such a situation, you must charge variable cost of Y variable cost of y plus opportunity cost of producing x and stop the product opportunity cost of producing y due to stop the production of x. As I told you, production of y variable cost 35,000. If you produce a one unit of y, you have to stop the production of x. In such a situation, you will lose 10,000 opportunity because I think you can remember we have discussed this matter previously. Therefore, this is suitable <coughs> when the product has excess demand in the market and company operating in full capacity before transfer. When division or the company, internal company or division or branch operating in full capacity and the product has excess external demand, variable cost plus opportunity cost is the best transfer price. Moving into the answer on the white computer screen, the ideal transfer price should be reflect the opportunity cost of the resources consumed by the supply division to make the supply, the item and should be standard variable cost plus opportunity cost of making the transfer when there is an absence of perfect external market price for the transfer item. But when unit variable cost are constant and the sales price per unit of end product is constant. Right? Read the answer again. The ideal transfer price here the C ask identify in which circumstance transfer price should be standard variable cost plus opportunity cost of making the transfer. Answer given the ideal transfer price should reflect the opportunity cost of resources consumed by the supply division to make and supply the item and so should be at a standard variable cost plus opportunity cost of making the transfer. When there is an absence of perfect external market price for the transferred item, but when unit variable costs are constant and the sales price per unit of the end product is constant, you will charge this. Again explaining the scenario, the production, the variable cost of the y e is 35,000. It should be constant, not varying. And you have excess uh, full capacity, you are working at full capacity and you have excess demand. Therefore, you cannot sacrifice the production of x. If you sacrifice, you have opportunity cost. Right? This is constant. This is constant. Right? Sometimes you may supply not x, y you are supplying directly y to the external market. You are producing within the full capacity, why? 
totally is applying to the external market because it has excess demand. Price constant, variable cost constant, you are charging a contribution in between these two, all are constant. If you decided to supply Y to B, you will lose this contribution. Therefore, in such a situation, you have to supply this product at the market price, sorry, variable cost plus opportunity cost, right. Right, now we are moving into past paper question of transfer pricing. I have selected a question from KB2 subject, KB2 that is 2015-2019 syllabus. The level is business level in that syllabus. Now, we are in corporate level in the new syllabus. Therefore, the previous syllabus KB2 business management accounting B M A. I have selected June 2019 paper question number 4, right. June 2019 question number 4. Question is available now. I will bringing you into the computer screen to discuss the question, but keep your mind while you read in the questions, you need to draw the rich picture. Without this rich picture, you cannot understand what currently happening, right. Let us read the question now. 2019 June, that is last year June paper, business management accounting, question number 4. Moving into the computer screen. Moon Private Limited manufactures product X and sells to external customers. Moon manufactures product X and sells to external customers at 5000 per unit. Moon also supplies product X to one of its subsidiaries, Star Private Limited, also at the same price of 5000. The price is based on cost plus 25 percent profit markup. Of the total cost, 75 percent is estimated as variable and balance 25 percent is fixed cost. The external sales of product X involve a variable packaging cost 500 rupees per unit, 
which could be avoided when supply is to star. That is true, because when we are selling a product to outside market, we need to pack it, packaging cost we have, transport cost to the market we have to incur. Sometimes we have to design the product according to the customer requirement. Those are the additional costs, generally packaging and de delivery costs. But when we decided to transfer the same product to internal division, no need to pack, a, pack it, no need to deliver it, no need to design it, because internal division is your own organization part, therefore you can deliver the finished product as it is to the other party. But when you supplying into the external customer, you need to attract them, therefore you need to pack it and deliver to their destination. When determining intergroup transfer prices, maximization of group profit is always considered as the primary criterion. The external market for product is, is volatile and Moon has the following scenarios for the first three months of the next quarter. Now, without moving into the next the three scenarios, let us try to draw up this situation on a sheet. I will move into the whiteboard screen. Now, our one division is Moon. Other division is star. Moon producing a product, that product called X. Let us take the boundary line of the entity. This is the entity. Moon selling this product outside at 5000 rupees per unit selling price, outside market. Transfer also at 5000, transfer price. The price is based on cost plus 25 per percent profit markup. Markup means 25 percent on cost. If it is 25 percent on cost, that is 20 percent on sale price. Therefore, total cost that is TZ will be 4000, because markup that is on cost that is 25 percent. If markup 25 percent, margin is on sale price, this is sales price, margin would be 20 percent, one fifth, because markup is one fourth. Therefore, one fifth will be thousand, profit will be thousand, therefore full cost will be four thousand. Now, this four thousand can be divided into two as variable cost and fixed cost per unit. The seventy five percent is variable cost, twenty five percent is fixed cost. Therefore, variable cost will be three thousand and fixed cost will be thousand. That is the cost structures given. Repeating it, Moon producing product X, incurring 4000 cost, 75 percent is variable cost and 25 percent is fixed cost. They can sell it to outside 5000, also transferring to star another subsidiary is at same price 5000. How we have derived this 4000? Because they are markup. is 25 percent as a percentage one as a number one fourth. Markup always given on cost, but they have given us the sales price. Sales price you always have the margin, margin always given on sales price. This is on cost, margin always on sales price. Generally, you know, if mark of one fourth, margin will be one fifth, that will be 20 percent. Now, selling price 5000, therefore, margin will be 20 percent, that is 1000. Then, full cost will be, say, total cost will be 4000, that is how we have derived this 4000, right. Out of that, 75 percent variable, 25 percent fixed cost. 
clear in the last sentence they have again mentioned the external market of product x this is the external market right external market external market for product x is volatile and moon has the following scenario. This is always fluctuating. If you take the graph, right, quantity and time, it is fluctuating, volatile the demand, not is constant always, it is volatile, not fixed constant demand, right. They have three scenarios in the next quarter. Let us see those, what are those three scenarios. Moving into the computer screen. In January, the marketing manager has stated that the transfer prices should be based on marginal cost, whereas finance manager has commented that in certain circumstances, <coughs> opportunity cost based method also be relevant. Moon will have external demand for all of it is production of product X at a selling price of 5000 per unit. In February, Moon will have a capacity of 4000 units of product X, of which there will be an external market available only 4000 units. March, Moon will have a capacity of 3000 units of product X, which there will be, there will not be an external market available. However, two third of this capacity could be used for alternative use, which is estimated to generate contribution of 2 million. Now, what is the question? Discuss in above extent which supporting cal with supporting calculations, wherever appropriate, how the transfer prices should be set in each of three months as per the given circumstances. Right. Let us take one by one. The January, the scenario A, let us read it again. The marketing manager has stated that transfer prices should be based on marginal cost. Whereas, finance manager has commented that in certain circumstances, opportunity cost based method also be relevant. Moon will have external demand for all it is product of product X at the selling price of 5000 per unit. Right. Moving into the computer screen, let us start to discuss the scenario A that is January. According to that, marketing manager mentioned marginal cost method is marginal cost is the best transfer price, but finance manager mentioned marginal cost plus opportunity cost will be the transfer price. The scenario was Moon will have external demand for all it is production of product X at a selling price of 5000. Moon, see the diagram, has Moon can sell all production in external market at 5000 per unit. Then, if moon transfer 1 unit of x to star, right, moon requires to stop the production of x by say 1 unit right now moon can sell all production in external market at 5000 if moon transfer one unit of x to its star, moon requires to stop the production of x 
by one unit to the external market. O moon requires to stop the supply, say supply of x by one unit to external market, same thing, right. Then let us see if moon stop the supply of one unit of x to external market, what will happen? They have a variable cost of 3000 and they are selling it at 5000 in external market. If they stop the supply of x to external market by one unit, selling price 5000, variable cost 3000, contribution 2000 will lose. This will lose. That is the impact. Now, try to understand the January scenario. Moon sell all the production to the external market. If Moon decide to transfer one unit to a star, they cannot sell that unit into the external market. If so, they will lose this 2000. Clear? That is the opportunity cost. Therefore, if Moon supply one unit of x to a star, moon should charge their variable cost plus the opportunity cost. That clear? Therefore, transfer price, the best transfer price would be the 5000. But sometimes, star can buy that item at a different price from external market. If so, you cannot exceed that. That is the other way. But in this scenario, they have not mentioned star can buy this from outside, because the last point given in January, moon will have external demand for all of it is production of product x at a selling price of 5000 per unit. Also, that star does not have any external market, they have done not mentioned it. Therefore, we can say moon can supply this product, their variable cost plus the opportunity cost they are incurring when transferring it to the external uh, the star. Therefore, 5000 can be the best transfer price in that type of scenario. Is that clear? That is the possible answer for January. Let us move into the February case. Read the February case now. Moon will have capacity of 4000 units of product X, which there will be an external market available for only 1000 units. Let us take B, February, right. Moon, their capacity 4000 units, 4000 units. Out of these 4000 units, for external market, they can supply only 1000 units. Yeah, only 1000 units, market available only for 1000 units. Therefore, they have to supply it to star, that is transfer, right, balance entire 3000. Clear? Now, they have not mentioned about the demand of a star, how much star demanding. Therefore, I, we, we have to believe we can supply entire balance 3000 to star. That is very important point in this question, they have silenced that, right. Now, their capacity 4000, try to understand. Out of this capacity, they can supply external market only 1000. If they are working in full capacity, they have balanced 3000 excess production. We have to assume star will buy all this 3000. That is the assumption we have to make. Is that clear? If examiner mentioned, okay, star wants only 2000, you no need to work in full capacity because you can supply 1000 in outside and 2000 to star. Therefore, you have to work only for 3000.
but here we will assume balance entire 3000 can supply to star is that clear right now what will be the best transfer price in this scenario clear right you can sell this at 5000 rupees in external market right therefore you will sell this at 5000 then this 3000 you do not have external market therefore you do not have opportunity cost no opportunity cost clear no opportunity cost therefore can transfer at variable cost which is 3000 clear here you can sell can sell at 5000 in the external market therefore have opportunity cost of transfer if you transfer you will lose the 2000 margin if you transfer this internally you cannot earn 2000 margin is that clear therefore you have opportunity cost if you transfer this shall transfer variable cost plus opportunity cost that is 5000 3000 plus opportunity cost that is 5000 therefore if you transfer this part internally without supply into external market you have to charge 5000 therefore you the best option is make 3000 units and transfer at 3000 rupees no opportunity cost balance 1000 if star demanding you have to transfer at 5000 if not star demanding you can sell it at outside 5000 right that is how you have to bifurcate the information according to the capacity restrictions they have. Now, let us see part C that March scenario just read March scenario I will take you again into the computer screen see the scenario of March moon will have a capacity computer screen right moon will have a capacity of 3000 units of product x for which there will not be an external market available however two third of that capacity could be used for alternative use which is estimated to generate contribution of 2 million right ok read it again it is a different scenario Let us take scenario C March right moon has a capacity of 3000 this is the capacity right they are capacity 3000 units what they can do 
can they sell it at external market? No, no external market. They have mentioned that Moon will have a capacity of 3000 unit of product X for which there will not be an external market available, no external market. That is very important, keep your mind. They have a capacity of 3000 unit here, they can produce 3000 per unit per month, but no external market, nobody buy it other than star. Therefore, star will buy entire 3000, will buy entire 3000. Now, since no external market, no opportunity cost. Why? If moon supply one unit of X to star, do they lose something? No, because other than star, there is no customer. Therefore, no opportunity cost, no contribution foregone. Hence, easily star can demand from moon, you me at your variable cost, clear? You me at your variable cost, because star easily can demand. But, now therefore, you can say, okay, transfer price would be variable cost 3000 rupees. Now, here is a problem. What is the problem? Moon incurring fixed cost. If star pays 3000 rupees per unit to moon, moon will not be able to recover their fixed cost, this part. Therefore, in the performance appraisals, moon will lose their incentives because they are in a lower performance. This is a problem, but here star always demanding. Why? Star no, star no, moon has to supply to me. They do not have a customer. Therefore, he always demanding to supply it at 3000. Therefore, he always paying 3000 to moon. But if moon accept this, they have to accept that. Why? They do not have external supply. But if they accept it, they lose their performances. Why? They are not covering their fixed cost in their division, because these are two companies. Then the group controlling party can advise, okay, if moon charge 3000 per unit, moon will lose to recover their fixed cost. Therefore, use dual pricing. Okay, you supply it at full cost 4000 then moon will sell it at 4000 s can record buy buy means they record in their purchase at 3000 variable cost these are dual pricing technique therefore in this scenario you can ask them to tra transit at 3000 but at 3000 there is a question moon not be able to recover their fixed cost. Therefore, you can ask them, okay, you will record it at 4000 full cost, you will record at variable cost 3000. Therefore, dual pricing technique is suitable here, right. In this scenario, dual pricing technique is most suitable rather than rely on transferring at variable cost. Look this question, it has 10 marks, a transfer pricing question in last June tested. Not only that June, many, pap many questions are available in last 10 papers from 2015 to 2019, right. You can refer all the questions from the, you can take all the questions and answers from the website. It is available at CS Sri Lanka, pass pa uh, that student category, then past papers and answers. Download and try to practice all questions. 
because here we are not going to discuss all the past papers. I will bring you into the study text again to show you the important technical areas. Here moving into the computer screen, I will bring you page number 290 the optimum transfer price. This is, it includes some theoretical aspects. Let us discuss that part also before we wind up the session today. Uh, page number 290, 2.19 topic, the optimum transfer price, right. In many questions, not in this case, but many questions examiner tested this theoretical area, the best transfer price, about the best transfer price. Let us read this and let us try to Sorry. Highlight the important areas. Part A. The ideal transfer price should reflect opportunity cost of sale to the supply division and the opportunity cost to the buying division. Unfortunately, full information about opportunity cost may not be easily obtainable in practice. I think you are referring your study text. You can remember in the previous question we have discussed. The ideal transfer price always cover the opportunity cost of supply division and receiving division both. But you have some issues in applying ideal transfer price because to set the ideal transfer price you require full information about both side that the sender side as well as the receiver side. Without having full information you cannot calculate of them their opportunity cost. Therefore, Restrictions in applying ideal transfer price is lack of information, detailed information of the sender as well as the receiver. That can be tested, keep in your mind. Better to have a short note and read it before the exam, then you can easily keep those in your mind. Now, moving into the part B, where a perfect external market price exit and unit variable cost and unit selling price are constant. The opportunity cost of transfer will be external market price or external market price less saving in selling cost. Right? One thing I need to tell you in the past paper we have discussed in uh, previous part that is 2019. June paper, one thing I forgot to tell you, I will take that again. In this scenario, they have mentioned in this question, I have forget that the external sales of product X involve a variable packaging cost of 500 rupees per unit. We have missed that point in the discussion, I would like to take that part also. You can take this detailed answer from the website. Here I just explaining, I will take because I have missed that uh, packaging cost of the product X in January, right, they, they have, they can supply entire production to the external market, therefore they have to charge the same market price from the star also, no issue. But when it is come to here, the February scenario. Their full capacity 4000, right? Their full capacity 4000. Out of that 4000, they can supply. I will explain it again for you. I have missed to explain that part. In February case, <coughs> in the February case, that case B. They are full capacity 4000, out of 4000 for external market they can supply 1000 and for star they can supply balance 3000, right. Here they have an opportunity cost therefore no issue, here no opportunity cost, right, because no external market. When they are selling it to outside they can sell it at, at 5000, but they do not have external market for this. Their variable cost says 3000. This 3000 include a packaging cost of 500 rupees. 
when they are transferring internally, no need to incur this 500 rupees packaging cost. Right? Therefore, you can eliminate this packaging cost this from this 500 and you can transfer it at 2500 rupees to the other party. Right? If you transfer this also exter internally, right? you are selling price 5000, variable cost 3000, your contribution 2000. If you transfer internally, you will lose this. But, if you transfer internally, this can be reduced into 2500. Why? You can eliminate your packaging cost. Right? Since you can eliminate your packaging cost and since you can reduce the price into 3000 to 2500, your total opportunity cost that 2000 is outside. But when it is come to the inside, you can reduce variable cost 2500. Right? And if you can transfer, it is at same 5000, supplying internally you have 2500 profit. Right? Therefore, the I have missed to use that packaging cost in the scenarios. Therefore, you need to consider in the scenario C also, right? they are producing how much? Scenario C, let us take scenario C now. That is March scenario, their full capacity was 3000, right? They can produce 3000. We need to consider that packing capabilities, but in this case they have, they does not have external market, right? No external market, no external market, only supply into star. Now, here the variable cost would be we have considered in the previous explanation as 3000, but do not take as 3000, because you have a packing cost 500, I have missed that. Therefore, variable cost should be considered as 2500, clear? That is a correction, keep your mind that a variable cost would be 2500, reducing the packing cost, because variable cost totally 3000, packing cost 500, therefore, internal supplying cost will be 2500. But the problem is, again March scenario mentioned two third of the capacity, capacity 3000, right? Yeah, capacity 3000, two third of the capacity that is 2000 units, this, this capacity can be utilized to produce another product. another product and it is generate 2 million contribution. Then per unit, it is generate 1000 contribution, right. Therefore, opportunity cost is 1000 rupees for 2000 units of the capacity. Therefore, this can be divided into 2000 units and 1000 units. Here you have variable cost plus opportunity cost, here you have only variable cost. When it is come to the variable cost and opportunity cost figures, the variable cost, since it is internal transfer, should be 2500, not 3000, since you have a packaging cost. I have missed that in the previous explanation, right. Therefore, variable cost will be 2500, the opportunity cost here. 1000 uh, you can generate producing another product. Here you have only variable cost that 2500. Therefore, therefore, from the entire capacity 3000, you can supply or use 2000 quantity capacity to produce another product and earn 1000 per unit. If you supply that same 2000 capacity to produce product x to star, you have to incorporate the opportunity cost to the variable cost, but the balance 1000, no opportunity cost, you cannot use that capacity to produce another product, therefore you can supply that at 2000.
500. Therefore, detailed answer, structured answer, please go to the answer available in the website for this paper, right. Again, moving into the study text, we have here, we were discussed here, it has another explanations. These explanations given about the ideal transfer price in different scenarios. Just read it before the practicing other past paper question. As a summary, what I am going to tell you, read the study text carefully. The lesson 9, it consists three parts, introduction to responsibility centers, transfer pricing and performance appraisals. Three areas you have in that chapter. We have discussed only the first and second, that is introduction to transfer pricing, sorry, introduction to responsibility centers and transfer pricing. You have another part, that is re, uh, performance appraisals. We have not discussed that part, but you need to read the entire chapter, because some exam, if you refer the pattern from June 2015 to December 19. In June exam, most of the time transfer pricing was tested. In December exams, most of the times performance appraisals was tested, right. That was the pattern, but we do not know with the new syllabus, with the new paper setter or the existing paper setter, we do not know that. What would be the pattern? Because the structure of a paper also different. In the previous paper, you had 10 marks 5 questions and 25 marks 2 questions, but now you have 20 marks MCQ questions, then another 5 questions for 10 marks, I'm sorry, another 4 questions for 10 marks, then 60 covered, then balance 40 you have 2 questions with 20 marks. Now, allocation of marks per questions of the last two questions reduced from 25 to 20, right. But 10 marks question, previously you had 5, now you have only 4. With these changes, I cannot assume whether the last pattern will continue, but this is the first exam, most probably in October, if the con that situations, this situation will over, assume it will be over, but we do not know. Sometimes can be postponed, sometimes can be held on October, right. We do not know how that new exam in our new syllabus going to be tested in the responsibility center counting. What you need to do, take the chapter, divide into three areas, introduction, transfer pricing and performance appraisal. Practice all three area, especially performance appraisal part will have ratio calculations, ROCE, ROI, right, that is ROI return on investment, return on capital employed, RI residual income, different performance appraisal techniques you have there. You can easily practice that, because study text clearly explain the calculation of ROI, RI and ROCE, right. These are the major three performance calculation methods available in the study text. Practice that part. Transfer pricing we have discussed and we have discussed only one past paper question in addition to the study text questions. Read those, uh, watch those areas and practice more questions using the past paper, right. Do not practice only the transfer price since we have discussed here, right. Your allocated time in this webinar series is only for transfer pricing, right. But that chapter is not transfer pricing keep your mind, that is responsibility center account. Read the all three areas and ready for all the three areas. You have 10 past paper question for KB4, take 10 past papers and take answers, read the question and answers. Then next second time, try to do the question by yourself without the answer. That is the way you need to take the practice of this area, right. Thank you very much for being with us for this during these five sessions. We will discuss further practice questions from ACC and CIMA in next video.